still think it's pretty much your phone. Great. Now we're in. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Okay. It's nice to see people from the public attend some of our meetings um, and provide some input. I'd like to call the meeting to order for the Thursday, July 15th, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission of Local Planning Agency. And the first order of business tonight will be the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise and cite the pledge for our beautiful country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First order of business will be a ro roll call. Could we have that please to, from our secretary is with us by Zoom. Jen? Yes, thank you. Mr. Ross. Here. Mr. Simmons. Here. Ms. Cottenberg. Present. Mr. Pristino. Present. Mr. Kizzelbosch. Here. Mr. Eugen. Here. Mr. Alvarez. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We do have a quorum, so we can proceed. Uh, in the form of announcements uh, this evening, um, Mr. Carter has been excused and from tonight's meeting, and Mr. Cristino will be voting for him this evening. Um, sad bit of news, Mr. Reyes, who's been on the plan commission for 10 years, um, has opted not to uh, continue his commitment um, to the commission. Not to say that he's not committed to the city, that's for sure. I know a guy like him wouldn't give up. Um, he decided uh, due to some family matters and, and traveling long distances that um, he would not be reapplying. Um, so he served for the commission uh, 10 years, I believe. Wasn't that right? 10 years? That's a long time. I think uh, one of us here may have the record now, um, but who's counting? Uh, <laughs> the city is very, very appreciative of the service that he gave because it's sometimes it's kind of a, a, a thankless job to get out, read, read all of the data that we get, pour over it, and get out and take a look at the site and make sure we're doing the right thing by looking at the site and getting everything correct to uh, protect the interests of the residents and the city. So thank you, David Reyes, for your service. Um, any other announcement? Um, do we have uh, anyone here? We might do a modification to the agenda. Do we have anyone here uh, relative to the um, 65 Blue Island Street site plan. Is there anyone here, either the contractor or owner? No, then, then we'll proceed with the agenda. For those of you who wonder what we're doing, it's the last thing on the agenda and it's a pretty short um, project, so we are considering moving it up. So we'll, uh, we'll stay with the agenda uh, as it is. Uh, next order of business will be the approval of the minutes, and that will be from the April 1st, 2021 meeting. I presume by now that all the commissioners have had a chance to review it. Any corrections, amendments, additions to those? Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I recommend approval of the minutes from April 1st, 2021. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Casino and a second by Mr. Hugan. Um, all those in favor by aye? Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Now vote aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Again, uh, Madam Secretary Janet did a great job. Minutes are approved as submitted. The next 
item on the agenda. Um, I'm going to ask the city attorney, do we close the uh, plan commission meeting and open it as a quasi-judicial meeting at this point? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Then we will uh, close the plan commission meeting, this formality, close, close the plan commission meeting, and now we'll have a quasi-judicial hearing, which is a public hearing. Um, do any of the commissioners have any ex parte communication in accordance with the law on this subject with anyone? Okay, we're clear on that. Good. If I can, point of clarification, and or visit the, the site as well. And or visit? Visited the site? Yes, that's part of the requirement as well. Not only if, not only if you have ex parte communication with the person, but if you also have any kind of investigation process yourself, which would include if you visit the site, just if you have, just declare it. But we visit the site to see what's going on there. Well, then just yeah. declare that you yeah, did that. that. Is be this a something new? I mean, we visit the site on a regular basis. I just that's, questioning here. We could discuss it later on, but that's part of the statute, so if it hasn't been mentioned before, I apologize. But yeah, like I said, this is it's, it's a simple clarification, yeah. gentlemen. It's just if you have visited, you visited, it should be any conflict. Uh, I met, I, I'm only mentioning because I heard you saying earlier that you got to visit the site, so I just want to make sure. When I visit the site, I don't talk to anybody. I, I, I can see. Yeah. Take answer. When I go to visit the site, okay, okay, and I just look what's on the plan and what's what's going to be proposed. That's the, I don't talk to anybody. If, so. if, if to make it easier, next time I'll submit the actual uh, statute, but uh, it does state if you have personal conversations with anyone and or conducted your own investigation, which would mean visit the site. Do you have to preclude yourself that mean from? No, just oh, okay. state the fact that you have done oh, that. So. You've done that, period. That's it. Okay, I understand, okay. Well, all this is just <clears throat> disclosure. Right. Whether you even spoke to someone and or, or you visited, went. you're just disclosing it. If the parties have any objections to it, they can raise it. Otherwise, you're setting the record straight. Got it. Okay, then uh, should we revisit that question? I, I think was just making a point of clarification. If every member of the board uh, visit the site, just make it known, or it might be easier those who haven't visited uh, make it known as well. Then Bill I Simmons, I visited the, the, the uh, site myself, both as a, as a check out a book and also to check out the, uh, <laughs> the I meant as conducting your investigation pursuant to this hearing here today. So, with okay, your, Mr. Arnold, we got you. We understand now. With, with your Thank point you. of clarification, I think I should uh, re-ask the question of each of the commissioners. So. Do any of the commissioners wish to disclose ex parte communication in accordance with the law or visiting the site? Yes, I did. I visited the site. I didn't talk to anyone. Okay. I visited the uh, Squid Lip site. Yeah. I, and I, I tried to get on. I tried to get to the 65, and I couldn't get in the gate. But I did not visit the other one. I didn't talk to anybody. Okay. I haven't been to Mr. Simmons? Mr. Simmons? Yes, I visited the library for two reasons. I said, check out a book and also the site where the facility is going to be extended. But I spoke to no one about the project. Okay. I haven't. I haven't been nowhere. None? Okay. <laughs> Ms. Cutler? I have visited the site. And I too visit all three sites. I uh, did not speak with anyone. Wore my mask so I couldn't. What I'll do, Mr. Chair, is I'll forward you the, uh, the floor statute for clarification and, and you can just, we'll disseminate it to the board members. Okay, that would be good because uh, I was unaware of that, but I thought, you know, we're doing our due diligence by getting out and looking at the, the different projects to make sure that what is, is on the plan is, is going to be acceptable and colors do match the house, that sort of a thing. So, okay, we will. Move on. Uh, the next 
item on a quasi-judicial hearing will be to swear in the applicant staff and anyone here this evening that will be presenting uh, factual information relative to either the squid lips or the library to please stand and be sworn in by our city attorney. Witnesses are all sworn, Mr. Chair. Thank you, City Attorney. We will move forward then uh, with the reading of, according to our agenda, the first project, which will be the library project. Too many papers here. Everything's covered up. The, the site plan modification approval for the North County Library. Would you please read that in for the record? It, yes, Mr. Chair. It is the uh, under 6A quasi-judicial public hearing for the site plan modification approval for the North County Library expansion 1001 Sebastian Boulevard proposed construction of a new 2,823 square foot building addition along with parking utilities, stormwater, and landscaping. Public Service, PS, and Zoning District. Thank you. Um, would we have a uh, member who is our representative for the plan come forward, uh, state your name, come forward up here to the microphone, state your name and um, Proceed with that. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Todd Howder. I'm with MBV Engineering. We are the uh, site civil engineers uh, for the project representing Indian River County. This is an Indian River County project uh, for this library. Architect for the project is not here tonight, but it's Tony Donatio with Donatio and Associates. And as you can see from your staff packets, uh, this is just a small addition to the North County Library, a little over 2,800 square feet with a few parking spaces. And as part of the project, we're just doing some pond, some pond maintenance that needs to be done uh, to restore it back to the dry condition. And we're also doing some infill landscaping with some of the trees and existing uh, landscaping throughout the area that uh, was part of the original plan that needed to be provided through this project. So. So that's it. It's pretty simple, simplistic on, on, its, uh, on its surface, but uh, that's what we are here for, and I remain available for any questions that you may have. Do we have the, at this point, the staff uh, findings on the project? Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, we'd like to enter the staff report and uh, survey the architecturals and the civil engineering plans that you received as part of the record. Um, as Mr. Howder explained, this is um, this is actually the third time that, uh, well, there's the original building was built in 1990, the library. In 2001, they came in and did two building additions, different areas. Um, at that time, they were required to meet the 512 landscaping and any of those overlay district uh, requirements. Uh, this is going to be for a 2,823 building addition in the uh, southwest corner, uh, which there, it, the floor plan states it's a reading room, there's some additional storage, as part of this, they're also adding 10 additional compact parking spaces. They're rest, uh, restoring the stormwater ponds and uh, replacement of the missing landscaping from that 2001 plan. Uh, our staff report um, details that they have met the required requirements of the Land Development Code. I'm just going to go over a few items. Uh, page 3, as you can tell, both the building coverage and the impervious and open area requirements have been met. Uh, they're meeting the setbacks. Um, the 
the building addition, the existing uh, parking on the site already meets code, even uh, with the addition of the additional space being added. Uh, but at, at the opportunity when the equipment's there and they found space, they are going to add some additional compact uh, spaces. So the site itself is going to have 133 uh, spaces. Uh, we did kind of go over that the, uh, the 2001 plan, um, visiting the site, there were some areas hedging some uh, trees that needed to be replaced, uh, replenished from that 2001. That will bring that site into compliance with the overlay district requirements. Uh, there's a, some additional hedging, I believe, along the rear uh, that will be infilled also uh, for that buffer for the res residents uh, to the south there. Uh, we did... Uh, Mr. Chair, just point of order, I'm sorry. One of the council members has their mic open because I'm hearing a lot of paper being rustled. And I appreciate that because I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, the Sebastian Lakes um, subdivision is, is a, it's a residential PUD. Those residential PUDs allow a certain percentage of commercial property. So actually the Winn-Dixie, the library site, the Walgreens, and the bank are all part of this PUD. But it's, a, it's an old PUD, lots of plats. There's interconnecting pipes. Uh, a lot of the lakes and stormwater areas are all interconnected through that PUD and then eventually outfall into the 512 ditch. Um, so looking into some of the piping and the connections, when we, when we revisited the, uh, went to go uh, look at the stormwater. Um, the, the client and the applicant have been meeting with St. John's. They've had different meetings reviewing what needed to be restored, bringing those ponds back to their original plan, the original uh, St. John's stormwater permit. Um, and so uh, through this project, I think some of that uh, stormwater is going to improve for the subdivision on a whole. Uh, they're going to go ahead and get those, those storms that have been kind of overgrown. There's some cattails in there. Um, they're actually supposed to be dry retention ponds, but those will all get corrected, and, and that's going to be a, a, a nice improvement for the residential subdivision also. Um, as some of the sheets have shown on sheet C3 and C9, uh, there were numerous utility easements that have been platted over the years on these different plats. Um, there should have been some easements on the last round of building additions that probably should have been abandoned, but we're going to get that all cleaned up through this site also um, and, and uh, dedicate a new utility easement along the rear and clean up some of the ones where some of those utilities are going to be running under the building. Um, so that is um, one of our, that is the condition of approval that we're recommending. Uh, staff has determined that the site is consistent with the comprehensive plan, the land development code, the 512 overlay district, and we recommend approval of the proposed site plan modification with the one recommendation that the abandonment of all applicable utility easements and establishment of necessary utility easements shall be completed before issuance of the certificate of completion can occur. But that'll allow them to begin construction with their building permits, issue their land clearing, their building permit while we're working on abandoning those easements. Was uh, there no question or requirement as far as um, landscaping around the new structure that's going up? I so, didn't see that in the staff report. You no, know, so um, the triangle overlay and the riverfront overlay, they do require foundation land, uh, planting for a building. The 512 only has increased landscaping along 512 with the addition of, of um, understory and, and a berm, um, but does not have the requirement of the foundation landscaping. Thank you. Okay, at this point, we'll open it for um, anyone from the floor. Any, any of those att attending this evening that have a, a comment, a point to be made about this particular project, uh, the addition of the room, uh, now is your opportunity to bring it up to the attention of uh, the commission. If you do, uh, please come forward and state your name and, and uh, speak into the microphone for us, please. I didn't plan on speaking, so <laughs> my name is Shelby Bacon, and I live in the subdivision that's impacted by all of this, the Spash Lakes. Um, I guess my biggest question, is it going to be added on where the parking spaces are now on the, the conference room side? 
and also will it go into any of Dr. Brooks' property? I will defer to staff on answering that question to be exactly correct. It's, it's not going into the Dr. Brooks property, and it is southwest. It is currently a green area. It is not going to be removing any parking. Uh, they're actually going to extend and add some parking on that side, okay. um, but it is it's going to be in that green area, southwest um, area. And they will be putting uh, some kind of shrubbery or something behind it in, where it, in front of our development and behind the library. Yes, there is an existing fence. Yeah, um, yes, Mr. Howder can. Howder can. If, if the council's okay, I'd like to show her that these are the, the plans. Can I, do you mind if I point out to her? Sure, go ahead. Okay I'd love to see Okay, it. great. So what you're looking at now is... Um, Just speak up so we can hear. Sure, sure. Okay. What, what I'm going to do is take her first to the landscape. Excuse me, sir. Point of, point of clarity. Yeah. You also have uh, an opportunity to use that, that, that uh, film there. That way you can show everyone what you're yeah, looking let's at. Yeah, that. that's a good idea. Great. Thank you. The Elmo. Can you turn on the Elmo? Ryan's from my office. He'll tell you how I am with technology. <laughs> is there a, is there a 13 year old in here? So, yeah, you, there you go. There you go. Hey, perfect. All right. I stopped you, my my cheaters here. Okay, what I'm switching to is sheet uh, C12. This is the landscape plan if you want to follow along with me. This also has the building and if you want to... So the building is going to be located like Dory said in the southwest corner right where my pen is. Mm -hmm. That's where there's existing green space as it stands at this point. The parking is just going to be a small extension off to the existing parking lot to the south and just a few compact up by uh, the Dr. Brooks parcel. There is no impedance into Dr. Brooks. Those are separate parcels. He's, we, we're staying in our area. We're actually doing some landscaping to infill some of the landscaping and some trees. Yeah, and then coming along here, you'll see we are actually, there are some trees that do have to come out that are existing in place right now, some cypress. We're gonna replace those back along the south area with the four cypress trees. And then if you follow along with my pen, there's actually, there's these various areas. These are the existing shrub areas, the dark trees is everything that we're bringing in that is supposed to be there but is not there presently so we're turning the site back how it should be with the trees and landscaping all the way around the property and even around i think uh, mr roth you had some questions about foundation landscaping even though it's not required there was probably considered some uh, landscaping near the existing foundation before that's not there we're actually bringing some of those palm trees back and putting those back that that should have should have been there we're going to replant them yeah, yeah, we're bringing in, we're bringing in new trees to put them back to the, the somehow they've been removed, so we're bringing them back in and planting new trees. So that also will help uh, the subdivision to the back with adding uh, yes. more landscaping. Yeah, yeah and I'll just so so the space. so the back area that we're talking about it actually has very nice existing landscaping right now with the shrub and trees. It's just some infill areas, uh, but yes, that will add in addition to what's, what's there right now. So it's a restoration back to how it should have been. Um, so we're going to take care of that through this project. Well, that's great you're willing to do that. I, I was there a second time today and looked, and, and I, was, I thought it was pretty well uh, green-spaced, green-scaped along the back. But I will admit there could have been some, some thin areas, but I, I think that will certainly help the project yeah. a lot. Agreed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is Excuse there anyone me. else from the public Excuse that wishes? Excuse to me, Mr. Ross. Would you get the witnesses, uh, the witness, to give her name and spell it, please? Could you come back up, please? I, I should have caught you right away. I heard it and I didn't pick up on it. I'm sorry. My name is Shelby S H E L B Y Bacon B A C O N. I had somebody yesterday ask me how to spell bacon, so I said eggs, um, and I went 1437 Trade Winds Way, Sebastian. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, is there anyone else uh, here this evening that wants to 
to speak about this particular library project. Just check Zoom. Okay, is there anyone on Zoom that has registered? Uh, nobody has their hand raised. None on Zoom, okay. Thank you, attorney. Okay, then that would close the uh, public portion of the quasi-judicial hearing now. Uh, commissioners, uh, let's make it simple and just start with Mr. K. Thank you. Quizzlebosh. Yeah, this is a very well-prepared plan. Thank you. Uh, only thing I'd say that compact parking, I know they are allowed eight by 15, the northwest corner and the southwest corner. They are all four parking eight by 15. I think there's a room you can make eight by 17, eight by 18. So when there is space available, you can make it a little longer. So, yeah. Yeah, on the... Uh yeah, I mean, 8 by 15 approved is okay. Yeah. But since there's space available, so you could make by 8 by 17 or 8 by 18. The, the, the one on the north side we can Not Northwest corner and southwest corner. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. southwest, we actually have some existing shrubs there that they would in. Well, still, the, still there were three feet of it. Well, okay, if we can, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah another foot or two, we can get yeah. that. We can, I mean, we can it's okay. That. I mean, we but it's good to that. have a little longer space there. Sure. The other thing is there is that uh, sanitary sewer information next to the pond number two. That's where the sewer, it's a gravity sewer end. It doesn't continue where it goes. It doesn't tell us anything. Yeah, the gravity sewer, I'm gonna, if you guys don't mind, I'm just gonna take yeah. this plane back so, to the podium here for that me. Near that uh, pond two. Yeah, on sheet, so I'm gonna refer you to uh, sheet C9 if you wanna follow along, that's our utility plan. Oh, yeah. We don't have a small one. Okay, do you, do you have something you can see? You got the, oh, you got the big one? I trade you because, I, I mean, this is tough to read. So, yeah, on C9, that's our utility plan. And so, yes, we actually have the relocated. It is a new gravity sewer line, but it's a relocated line because the original no, line. No, that, that will stay there. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm talking about the structure which is very close to pound two. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's an existing. Yes, yeah, existing. Yep. So it's going to stay as it stays. Okay, from there, where is flow? Where the gravity sewer goes? Flows to the south. It doesn't show any extension or anything where it's going. Yeah, no, the, the, the county survey, I mean, the county's provided survey, they just showed the survey that was on the parcel. They didn't go any further because this is actually a connected sewer system. Like Dory said, these are interconnected with not only with the pond systems, but also it goes to master lift stations that a lot of these areas are connected to. So the sewer actually can use, so continues it's, it's on. So it's going further. to the Sebastian Lake, that what you say? Yes, there's a lift station that's connected there that it, that it, that it gets to. That's where yeah. I, why the easements are there and, yeah. and whatnot. But it's they good, didn't go in there and grab all it's the It's good to make a note there, you know, otherwise it's a dead end, you know. <laughs> yeah, just we can add a note on there to say continues yeah. to Sebastian Lake. All right, that's it. That's what I have. Sure. Thanks. Easy enough. Yeah. Mr. Casino. Uh, now the plans are uh, are complete. I'm pleased to see the deep root system that you're using for the new plantings. Allows you to put in uh, a little bit of a nicer tree and oak without worrying about the roots destroying all of the underground utilities you have going on in there. And that's it for me. Nice to see. Thank you. Mr. Healy. I have no questions. Thank you. Mr. Simmons. I have no questions either. Thank you. I mean, Really. Looks good. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's great. Um, my only uh, comment is that I, I believe the library is one of the stars in our crown here in Sebastian. It's um, always been beautifully maintained. Every addition that has been added has been added tastefully. And I'm really glad to see that the county is adding more space because I know there's a growing need. And uh, this, these plans were beautifully done. Thank you. Thank easy you. to read, easy to follow. Thank you. Thanks. And I have none either, and you stole my words, because whenever I see a project like this that is, is well done and uh, matches up with what the codes call for, it, it's great. Make our job a lot easier. Yeah. And it also Agreed. makes it uh, look 
much better to the public when they're looking at a project and understand that everything is right here in front. Okay, we've covered um, all the bases uh, other than, uh, well, if you would like an opportunity to respond to any of the issues raised. I'm, I'm, I'm great with all the issues, There's, and to me, there were no issues. They were just great comments, easy to address, and just thank you for your time uh, for the project. Okay, um, now, commissioners, any questions uh, you would like to discuss amongst ourselves, deliberation <laughs> before we uh, call for a motion? It's pretty clear, so. Okay. Then I, I guess we're, not a guess, we're ready for a motion. We're gonna make the motion. I'll make a motion to um, approve this plan as submitted with the stipulation that archaic easements be abandoned properly and uh, new necessary uh, utility easements to be completed before issuance of a certificate of completion. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Louise Kautenberg and a second by Mr. Cristino. Any questions on the motion? Good. Uh, have a roll call, if we would, Madam Secretary, for a vote. Uh, yes, uh, I have one question, maybe for um, Dory. Is Miss Cottenberg to vote? She's an alternate, and you would announce that Mr. She's Christina would be voting. I uh, know. Janet, I'm sorry I didn't change your motion sheet, but Ms. Cuttenberg has been appointed as a regular member, and so she will be voting. And then Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. And Mr. I, Christina I is voting that. for Mr. Carter. Okay, thank you. No, All right. no, no reason to be sorry whatsoever. <laughs> you're, you're just following up to make sure we're doing a great job. Thank you. Well, proceed, okay. proceed then Hugan. with the roll call. Mr. Hugan. Yes. Mr. Kizzelbosch. Yes. Ms. Cuttenberg. Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Mr. Cristino? Yes. And Mr. Alvarez? Yes. The vote is seven to zero in favor, so it is unanimous. Great. Thank you, everybody. Great. That's, that's county. I thought she did. She did. I didn't hear it. Well, my answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yours was, yours was the first na name I called. Maybe you didn't get it. No, Christine. Yours was the first one called. I guess I didn't hear it. It's okay. It's okay. Seven, seven to zero. It passed. It passed. It passed. That's good news. Okay. Do we have any ex parte? We went to the today. The next item on our agenda is a um, quasi-public hearing for the um, what's commonly known as uh, the, as the uh, Squid Lift Spins Marina major modification. Um, Attorney Anon, would you please read that in properly for us? Yes, Mr. Chair. This is a quasi-judicial public hearing, site plan modification approval, and riverfront overlay district waivers. Squid Lips Restaurant and Finns Marina, 1660 Engine River Drive. Proposed additions of a new 8,400 square feet over the, river, <clears throat> over the water restaurant and a, a new 2,100 square feet marina office complex and a new 2,300 smokehouse restaurant along with parking, utilities, stormwater, and landscaping. Proposed waivers from section 54-4-21.A.5, subsection C, subsection 1, roofs and parapets regarding required roof pitch and section 54-4-21.A.7, subsection C, subsection 2, B.1, regarding required foundation planning. This is a commercial water uh, front residential uh, zoning district. 
Thank you, Attorney Anon. And you will recall those numbers for the different uh, parcels that we're including in, so we don't have to remember them. Okay, proceeding then with the with the hearing. Uh, do any of the commissioners wish to disclose an ex parte communication, uh, which would include uh, conversations and also a visit to the property? I, I visited the site. I visited the site. I eat there weekly. <laughs> And you looked at it while you were there, correct? Were, I, did. I guess to, to properly answer that, did you discuss any details of that's, the project with any no. of the, the persons there? No, that's our ex parte part of it. None. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, Mr. Quizelbosch. Same thing. I did not discuss with anybody, but I will do the site. Okay. Uh, Mr. Simmons? I drove by, I didn't eat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Alvarez. No, I have not gone by the site. Ms. Scottenberg? I have visited the site. I did not speak with anyone. And I too visited the site twice, but did not speak with anyone at the site. So did you get the uh, proper information, uh, Janet? Madam Secretary? Yes, when Mr. Alvarez said no, did that mean he didn't visit the site or he didn't speak to anyone? I did not speak to anyone and I didn't visit the site. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're set on that. Uh, at this point, we're going to ask our city attorney to swear in the applicant, uh, staff and anyone presenting factual information uh, during the hearing tonight to please stand and be sworn in. I thought, I thought we were sworn them in. We already swore them in initially for we both did. hearings. So, good, so that covers for both the hearings. Okay. Yes, good. same witnesses. We'll, we'll omit that. Uh, at this point then we'll have the applicant or agent uh, make a presentation to uh, the commission on the project. Good evening, Chairman Roth and Commission. Um, I'm Ryan McLean with MBV Engineering. I'm going to stop you right there. We d I didn't get your name, and I'm sure Madam Secretary didn't either. So. I apologize. God, this is better right here, guys. Uh, I said good evening, uh, Chairman Roth and Commission. My name is Ryan McLean with MBV Engineering. We're the civil engineer. Um, for the Squid Lift Site Improvement Project. Um, as you've seen in your packets presented by staff very diligently, um, essentially Squid Lift is a multifaceted project to basically expand one of the milestones uh, we look at as far as in City Sebastian. You have the addition of an 8,400 square foot over the water restaurant that makes use of an existing pad that's been in the community for close to 30 some years. And you have a use of some other retrofits on the Western parcel coupled with the multitude of necessary site improvements to support such a development as this. Um, ultimately, it's a multifaceted project. I said two restaurants, along with the marina support structure that provides support to the existing Finns Marina um, and basically provides additional assistance throughout residents and transients throughout the city of Sebastian. Um, ultimately, through a lengthy process, we're coming around five years off and on with development, um, but a really strong push in the last year We've been through a multitude of different um, hurdles, but ultimately see ourselves coming through this on the other side better for it. Um, and reasonably everything from stormwater to utility to landscaping, plus the ultimate improvements you see before us um, have been challenging, but I think ultimately you're gonna provide a benefit to the community as a whole. And I uh, welcome any questions you guys may have. I'm sure there may or may not be a few, um, but I can walk through each and every one if necessary. And um, I welcome them so, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll have the, I, I, I don't mean to be uh, far out on this, but I'm sorry, I still did not get your name. Ryan, with an R, Ryan McLean. McLean, M-C-L-E-A-N. McLean. McLean. Okay. Yeah. 
Scottish Irish. I, I'm sorry. It's okay. You know your name, so that's why you say it fast. I say it fast. <laughs> I talk true. fast, unfortunately, when I'm in the board. It's Public right. speaking is a challenge, of course. So. Okay. Um, staff, uh, let's hear your review on this. Thank you, Commissioner. Beautiful big project. Thank you, and um, I'll start off by saying we'd like to uh, enter into the record, the staff report, the survey, the landscape plan, the civil engineering, the building and floor plans that you were all given into your packet. Um, like Ryan said, this has been a few years since we've been reviewing this plan, and it just seemed every time we inch forward, uh, there was a variance or something that was needed to continue on with this project. So uh, staff is also very happy that this is before you tonight, and I think from the plans you'll see this is going to be a great asset to our riverfront. Um, when those buildings get built, landscaping, the lighting, I think it's going to be great uh, for down there on Indian River Drive. Um, with that, I'd like to go over the, the staff report um, to kind of, again, um, verify that the, the land development codes for this project have been met. Uh, I've kind of picked out a few things that I thought were point, important that we'd like to point out and make part of that record also. Um, with regards to uh, finished floor elevation, um, uh, we had to, on the concrete pad, uh, some of the benchmarks have changed over the years. Um, from 1929 to 1988, uh, that did affect, and the FEMA maps have changed. So it was something that our building official had caught that the, um, they were going to be about six, seven inches short of the FEMA requirement for the supporting um, post underneath that slab. And so that was taken before city council. It was the first time we had done a FEMA uh, variance and after consideration by City Council that was granted. So with regards to that finished floor elevation, uh, there is a variance. We had supplied the order for you uh, for your review. Uh, uh, square footage building coverage, um, open and, and uh, impervious areas are all in compliance. Um, the existing restaurant that is over the water, the existing screw whips, that is actually part of a submerged land lease, which means it's not included as part of this land area. But where the concrete pad is, that is actually part of riparian rights. And the building, uh, excuse me, the property line does include, goes out into the water, and that slab is actually a part of the area that, is, uh, that was included for impervious and open space requirements. It's actually part of their, uh, their property, the site uh, uh, size. Um, so it, it does meet our impervious and open space requirements, all of the setbacks. Um, with regards to building height, and again, that existing slab, and where we measured a few years ago, where we measured building height, uh, they were in need of a, height, a variance with regards to building height. Um, some of that has, at the time, it was four feet that they needed that height, uh, a variance for four feet. It went before, again, the Board of Adjustment, and after discussion, it was granted. But if you recall, within the last uh, six months, we have changed the land development code on where we start that uh, measurement from and it's actually uh, as you can see as noted in the staff report a foot and a half um, but that was because the there was a slab that was existing that was kind of a uni unique situation and also that so that we were able to get a, a pleasing uh, aesthetic looking nice aesthetic looking building uh, I think that was consideration of why that variance was granted again you were given that um, order for your review um, it was good for 24 months and as we were still reviewing the project, uh, they did have to ask for a six-month request, uh, extension of that variance request and or grant approval, and that has been granted uh, for that also. I gave you the, a copy of that extension. Um, there is on the west side, uh, they're going to put a, a new dumpster enclosure and also add, because of the amount of restaurants on that site, uh, a nice uh, compactor on that with an enclosure that will help uh, with the uh, waste management for the three for the three restaurants that will be on that site now. Uh, with regards to parking, um, on page five, there is a good uh, breakdown of the parking spaces, the new spaces that they're adding. Uh, they are, as you can see, there was quite a bit of motorcycle parking. Um, we have, uh, it's been kind of our policy that two motorcycle parking spaces have, have, have equaled one standard space. Uh, so they're putting in 23, uh, that'll give them credit for 12 parking spaces. Um, if you're familiar with the site, when you drove by, you know on the west side there are some beautiful specimen oak trees. And with some of our other sites along the riverfront, we have, the code allows us to give some parking credits 
for those specimen trees. And uh, based on the size that we, the information we we're given on the tree survey, um, we have given them 22 spaces for credit. Um, as I did also uh, note though as one of our recommendations of approval, um, and similar to what we did with the Tiki Bar, that was the other site that we gave uh, quite a bit of parking credits, um, that if for whatever reason, hurricane or uh, drought, disease, if any of those trees are, have to be removed or taken out, um, they would be required to provide three additional parking spaces uh, for the trees if, if they were to come down. Hopefully they're going to stay there because they, they offer a lot of shade on that site. They're beautiful trees. Um, they were also, if you had looked at their parking calculations, uh, they needed 14 parking and loose spaces. And if you're familiar with that project, or with that program, you can buy exemptions from the city for parking um, that you may need at $3,200 a space, that money goes into a parking trust fund, which then allows the city to add some additional parking uh, in areas within our riverfront. Um, this is going to be a great, uh, what, what the developer and the applicant is, is uh, offering to do and providing. There is that large ditch on the west side. They are going to pipe that, and while everything else is under construction, while they're doing their parking lot, they're going to pipe that swale and also add uh, 19 uh, spaces that are on street in accordance with our design, the stamped parking spaces. And what we will do is calculate uh, the cost of what it's costing them to put that in and apply that towards the cost of what they need for the 14 parking spaces. And uh, there's a formal agreement that would need to be uh, executed by city council and, and by the applicant, and uh, we're re requ requesting that that get done before they get any COs on their building, but that's something we can do while they're under construction. That's a fantastic idea. Yes, they're doing, they're doing a great, uh, it'll be a, a nice uh, additional parking parking up there and help their site in addition to any of the events or anything that are there up in that area. Um, as if you had looked at, uh, uh, really looked at the architectural plans, uh, you'll see the, the over the water restaurant is going to have their mechanic equipment on the roof. They are screening that. And the other two buildings will have their mechanical equipment on the side. That's, they're also going to be raised platform. They're all going to be screened. Uh, we did um, the marina office and the restaurant that'll be over the water. Because of the uniqueness of them being raised, a lot of that uh, plumbing and uh, uh, electrical, mechanical type of piping will be seen from underneath under that if you're at the road level, street level. Uh, so you can see from the elevations they are going to put some sort of screening that does go all the way around those buildings so that that is hidden. Um, we did provide some pictures of kind of what's existing. We're hoping that with the new buildings, any of that under the walkway equipment will be either through conduits or something. Uh, if it turns out that it's going to be noticeable at that point, um, and maybe unsightly, we'll uh, determine if they need some sort of screening on those walkways and ramps to also hide that under the ramp and walkway um, um, uh, piping and wiring that may be visible. As, as a kayaker, I know that I have gone under some of those, uh, not maybe not that particular one, but in the lagoon, they the, those uh, ramps go way out, mm -hmm. and so you'd be zigzagging around. So if we can keep it clean, that would be better, and it would also look better. Yes. So that's a good good point. Uh, you were also provided a photometric plan that does show the uh, lighting, uh, the light fixtures that are going to be added to the building. And I think with the um, the parking lot lighting, which will be kind of that period looking uh, lighting with the uh, um, the gooseneck type of uh, fixtures, uh, I think the lighting of that will be a nice uh, a nice extra to that site. Uh, they have added that on their photometric uh, information, so you had that to see. Um, we were given, based on the additional trips, they were required to do a traffic impact analysis. The city engineer did review that. Uh, the, he had requested some additional information for those particular hours on the weekends, Friday, Saturday nights during those um, evening dining hours, which we did get from them. And based on the information, uh, it was determined that uh, there was no, it wasn't going to impact the level of service for Indian River Drive that required any additional uh, improvements to the road in that area. The, um, the applicant is requesting a landscape waiver for the foundation landscaping that was going to go around the, Marie, uh, excuse me, the smokehouse restaurant, um, five canopy trees. Uh, staff feels that that's a, an adequate request and um, based on because of the west side of that building is up against the stormwater area, uh, we feel that was a, a, a adequate request to, to be granted. Um, we also though looked at 
when the final plan came in, we had been working with them uh, back and forth on regarding the area that that's going to be in front of the over the water restaurant, kind of that beach area, um, that there are some native plantings there. And we were um, looking for some additional native plantings in there, which does show on the plan. But it also shows a lot of palm trees and some other canopy trees. Um, if when they're planting, if it looks like that's going to be just too many trees for that upland area next to the water in that sandy area, uh, we would we're asking you to ex uh, extend that waiver request for another five trees if need be so that we can get that area to be more of an upland uh, shoreline type of area with the native vegetation um, instead of the amount of canopy trees that's being proposed in that area. So we're requesting the waiver for the five trees for the foundation planning for the smokeout restaurant and also staff is requesting then some additional um, waivers for the upland buffer area uh, by the shoreline in front of that restaurant. Um, and also just a, a few more things. The, um, the other waiver is for the pitch of the roof on the new over the water restaurant. The code does require minimum 512, but based on that they've already gotten a, a height variance and uh, just to be able to get those walls in a functional restaurant, um, they, it is a 412 pitch. It's still a pleasing building, so staff feels it meets the intent of that riverfront overlay and recommend approval of that waiver request also. I guess just the other r small remaining thing is if you noticed on the site plan, there is a small encroachment of the Davis House bed and breakfast of their deck. That's been there for quite, for quite a while. Um, the owner of the Squidlips property and that owner, they're okay with, <coughs> with the encroachment. We just wanted to um, point out that if it gets expanded um, or it's destroyed and they have to rebuild it, that they would have to meet the current setbacks and requirements. And because this was agreement between the two property owners, we requested that the Squidlips property owner just send them a notice of letter saying, hey, I'm expanding my site and there, there's still this deck issue and, and down the road if we need to address it, um, the city's aware of it, we're all aware of it, and we'll have to follow the, the setback codes. Uh, with that, staff feels and is, uh, uh, de is, has determined that this proposed site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan, the land development code, and the riverfront overlay district. Uh, we recommend approval of the site plan with the uh, following uh, proposed conditions. Um, at this time, the civil engineer is working with DEP uh, to get their um, stormwater uh, ERP permit. Uh, we just haven't received that final copy of it yet. We would like a copy of that before land clearing permit is issued. Uh, that the parking and lieu agreement be executed by the applicant and city council before uh, certificate of occupancy for the first building completed can be issued. And uh, just more of some notes that were, that were on the site plan already. Uh, the eight specimen trees were saved and given parking credits. If any of the damaged uh, trees are damaged, removed, or cut down, that three additional parking spaces would need to be provided. Um, screening would be required if piping and wiring underneath the new concrete and wooden ramps are noticeably visible. And uh, uh, just that the, there are some existing signs on the site. They do not meet uh, the current Land Development Code sign requirements and that all of the new signs that you saw on the plans would need separate uh, permits and, and um, also meet code. Uh, we also recommend that you do grant a waiver for the design criteria to allow the 412 pitch roof and a landscape waiver for five foundation, fine, uh, foundation canopy trees around the smokehouse restaurant and up to five additional trees within the shoreline buffer area uh, on the east side by the new over the water restaurant. Thank you. Very good report. Okay, at this just point. one quick uh, point of clarity. I know that Dory and I spoke about this earlier, but in reference to the um, that third bullet, we're asking for an additional parking spaces for three. That's per tree. So if it's a tree is damaged, removed, or cut down, they're asking for three additional parking spaces must be provided per tree. Thank you. We've added, or I've added in my notes to make sure that that gets in, and if it isn't, I'm sure you'll remind us. Um, okay. Um, 
Commissioners. Uh, Evan, pardon? Uh, that's, um, did I skip that? No. No, that's, that's, uh, that's coming up. According to the official agenda I have here. But thanks for the, no, 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 no. So at this point, uh, the commissioners, do you have any questions of the applicant or staff? on this particular project. Yes. Mr. Quisabai. Uh, sheet C4, permit required. Why are we missing St. John permit? We don't need that. And I'm sorry, Mr. Kizabash, I was getting my papers. What was the question? The, St. John permit is not mentioned there. On the list of the permit? Uh, no, at this point, I'm sorry, Ryan. Go no, ahead. you're fine. Um, so basically, in certain times, um, DEP trumps St. John's in certain in the ERP evaluation or the Env environmental resource or stormwater evaluation. In this capacity, they do. So ultimately, you're only attaining an ERP from DEP in this capacity. St. John's does not issue one in this. One. I think it should mention in the apprentice. Was, uh, Make sure St. John permit there. The reason I'm asking this thing, the landscaping, so many lands, trees or bushes are shown in the retention area. Yeah. St. John will never allow it to put well, any bush there. What's, it's debatable in that effect. So traditionally, no. Um, but DEP and the City of Sebastian and Code Allowance does for it. And the stormwater calcs allow for the volume reduction associated with the tree growth. Um, like I said, it's not traditional, but if you, if you saw the landscape requirements associated with not only the city of Sebastian plus the riverfront overlay, you know, there's an extensive amount of canopy required to meet the requirements. Okay, the question to city. Why we keep allowing a street right way to put parking? Why we keep doing that? To allow what street parking? Yeah, in the street right way. Eliminated the utility drainage easement, everything. You're filling the ditch, and there's an underground telephone line, cable line there, okay? Who will be responsible for maintenance of this parking, these parking, 19 spaces? Soon Indian River Drive will be a parking lot. Everybody develop at that work. So we'll be moving that, affecting the traffic for southbound, whatever it is. So. Well, I think you'll see in, in a lot of your downtown areas and your main areas that there's always this on-street parking. It does um, slow traffic down sometimes. It's a traffic calming sometimes when you have that back out uh, parking mm -hmm. um, and it is something at this point that the city has um, felt that we want this in our riverfront so this was uh, something that was going to be done at the same time as their their construction of their parking lot so it, it, it did go through review from stormwater uh, we there was some questions on the um, the capacity of that ditch if the new pipe was still going to cover that we, we were provided with that information so we're comfortable that we're not losing any additional uh, water uh, uh, conveyance or capacity. I will come to that point too. Uh, you're showing angle parking backing in the southbound traffic. You're not showing any any degree of angles. So what is that is? So the uh, so the design of the on street parking is there's only one fixed approach to the city of Sebastian, and basically you're providing a 45 degree stamped asphalt or stamped concrete design uh, with a two foot Miami curb. It's a fixed city standard. Um, so in this capacity, we didn't provide the angle information. My question, can... my question is, southbound lane is 12 feet wide. When the back in that, there, they will be going crossing the center line of the street. Mm -hmm. The 12 feet is not enough for backing the car there. We so, have 45 degree angles. Okay. So that is a concern. So okay. That's a traffic hazard there. Okay. It's a technical thing. I don't know if we could do much about that because city is recommended to approve this thing. For the drainage question, if you see sheet, I think C8, section B, and there's a 10-foot buffer between motorcycle parking and the property line, the landscape buffer. Yes. That all draining to the street. So you're making street drainage worse than present thing. Uh. If you see section B. Yeah, so if you view section B, ultimately it's an intern conveyance swale. 
bringing the water down towards the uh, driver system system. Obviously, every property has a certain capacity when you're forced to, to, to raise for fill. Um, and we're trying to interfere, intercept as much offsite water flow as possible. Um, so you can imagine in this capacity. It's supposed to be post development condition should be better than pre development. And it is from a, it is from a pre, not only from a quality, but it was also from an attenuation standpoint, it is as well. No, you should have a swale in this 10 foot buffer, keep the water in the property going to that uh, retention area at the north, north corner. So, City Sebastian Code does not allow me to in include a stormwater facility within the 10 foot landscape buffer. Well, again, all those driveway on the east side parking area, they are also flowing to the street in the yep. drive. The driveway on the east, the driveway is on the east side? East side, there are two driveway. Correct. You see the section, I'm looking at the section, they're good flowing over there. Correct, yes. Entrance drives are allowed to flow to the right of way. Correct. Mm -hmm. It'd be impossible, you can imagine, you can't ultimately have, the, unless the city would provide on site treatment in the right of way which we do which they do for both for the boulder system but for on-site systems you have to be able you have to give the functionality for a site to develop to the site my my concern is there is when you develop some property you take care of the all the existing problems mm -hmm. yeah. we are making it more worse here yeah. i don't i think that's a bit of interpretation where they'll be about flooding it. on the indian river drive all the time okay so that's one concern. Second concern is city should make an agreement for the maintenance of these 19 parking. Who's going to maintain these things? Between the owner and the city, city going to maintain after the development is done? Yes, it's in our city right of way. But there is this trust, this, the, the money goes into a parking trust fund. Um, but it's no, it's no different than that parking that's in front of Captain Hiram's or the, the uh, um, crab stop of the same design. And um, in terms of maintenance, I mean, the design doesn't require a lot of, of maintenance, but it is in the street parking. Yeah, the street they'd be way. using the parking, so they should be doing something for maintenance. In that, there should be some agreement between the developer and the city. It's they're not exclusively using the parking. It's mm -hmm. very clear that there's no signage that quotes that refines the parking to solely to squid lifts. Ultimately, it greatly benefits the into that's most in the Clarence Park activity. Mm -hmm. But yet, also imagine they're also taking on incurring the cost for construction which is above and beyond realistically the $3,200 you would incur per space from a fee and loop payment. I think we should look these things, my comment, and somebody should correct this thing there. So otherwise the purpose of PNZ is nothing. So we can't do anything. You submit the thing and then I cannot accept these plans. For If, if the biggest pushback is with on street parking as a whole, um, then realistically that's something that can be stepped above and beyond this specific project. But any minor comments that you need to us to take a look at? More than no, one. you did your best, but I think my thing is there. You should look these things with my comment, and you should you could correct those things. Most of the things you could correct it. So, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kizabash, we have um, so our city engineer, we had a consulting engineer, and then also our stormwater department and city manager had looked at specifically that design. But if you would like to make it a condition that it is re-examined, looking at your, your concern that there's going to be additional drainage into the street, we certainly can have. I'm not saying that. they review it or not. They did review it, but sometimes they overlook these things, which I'm mentioning. Okay? It's not that they intentionally overlook something. I mean, mm -hmm. it happens sometimes right. when you review something. That's what I'm saying. If you'd like to but, add But if you see the section is 10 feet buffer, whole buffer is flowing to the street. There. Those are my concerns. Mm -hmm. Mr. Casino. And I'm gonna continue with uh, Mr. Kizilbosch's concerns. I, I see um, direction flow from the parking lot on the west side of Indian River Drive. Uh, and it looks like it would exacerbate the uh, conditions. It would make it worse, uh, the flooding. And it's right in the area where the parking in lieu of uh, it doesn't look like the storm drains are going to be adequate to keep up there. It's not getting it. Uh, and the, the other end of the parking lot, which is further away. Um, you got the detail I don't see here. Uh, you've got uh, you know delineated where the paved areas are going to be. 
you also have areas that are unpaved. Uh, there's no description of the materials used. Are you putting coquina, uh, something that's going to absorb a heavy flow of water? Uh, I'm concerned that you're going to see water on Indian River Drive also. Unpaved as in unpaved areas within the city right away? On, in your lot here. It looks like some of these lots are going to stay dirt or... Oh yeah, are you, do you have a copy of the landscape plan document? Well, I'm not on the landscape. I'm on C5. I'm on your paving, grading, and drainage. Yes, sir. Yeah, and they're reasonably plans that are unmarked for impervious coverage per traditional civil design are reflected as pervious design. And if you reference the landscape, you can see sod materials, mulch materials, various pervious areas of coverage. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, Mr. Right. Mr. Uh, in answer to your question, though, all of the parking spaces are all going to be asphalted or concreted. There aren't any uh, stabilized or, or pervious parking spaces. All right, it looks like I've got parking spaces on the south side, uh, on the west of Indian River Drive. Those so are existing concrete uh, spaces. Those what are, are those, those employee spots? Or? On the west side? West and south. Yeah, uh, west of Indian River Drive and the southern part of the, the plan. There's some existing parking mm -hmm. in that vicinity. I know. But not necessarily dedicated to employees, it just has been acting in a certain capacity for quite some time. Um, and then they basically then just expanded to account for all additional parking required for the, for the restaurant development. I get, okay, I'll go back to the original question. Are you going to replace any materials in there uh, with, say, a coquina, something that's going to be a quick training a material to avoid any overflow onto Indian River Drive? I don't have the ability to park on anything but asphalt or concrete in the city of Sebastian. They don't allow a stabilized material in that capacity. Okay. I'll go to uh, my next question. It looks like you are going to allow the existing lift station uh, to handle both restaurants. And the, you're going to add a lift station for the barbecue restaurant. Yes, sir. So that capacity has already been ascertained to be able to handle the bathrooms in an additional restaurant. Yes, for the existing restaurant, yeah. <clears throat> exactly. And I noticed the grease trap, you're adding a 250 gallon grease trap to a barbecue. Correct. And you, your other one is 1,250 gallons. So, so that's, so that's going to under retrofit, but, but modern grease systems work. They have high efficiency systems that can work in small capacity, but the MEP engineer has just recently retrofitted it to a 1,250 gallon system just for price. Yeah. But we, we recently permitted a 12,000 square foot restaurant in the city of Vero Beach that references two 250 gallon high capacity systems. So they can, they're just a maintenance concerns from a smaller restaurant in safe fashion, just didn't see fit. Okay, this is a restaurant question. Uh, the, all these restaurants use fry lighters and uh, the grease is stored and typically uh, recycled. Mm -hmm. They have a service that comes in there. Right. I didn't see any notation of where it would be stored on site or across the street. Uh, I guess concern is transporting any grease in that area, especially when you're over the water. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't get in the water. Uh, do you have any idea how that's handled by the restaurant? I personally do not. All I know is if there is a fixed system for grease storage, it would be within the dumpster enclosure. So they would be using the go the go carts that they use now to transport the garbage across the street. The most efficient methodology for relocation of grease. But the bulk of I think a bulk of the production, actual food production, isn't occurring in the overwater restaurant. There's a bit of a there's a bit of move, and then they can functionality to that system. Um, they're still yeah. working out the kinks. Every three days they typically dump those fry laters and however, start however with new grease. So right. I'm just wondering how they're going to handle that grease over the water. Yeah, no, I would, rightfully so. All right, thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Cristino. Mr. Hugan. I just have one, I want to understand something. The off-site, the on-site parking on the roadway, that's going to remain after the project is finished, right? The on-site parking? The, the yeah, on the street? Roadway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's going to remain. Okay, that's all I have, but I think it's going to be a welcome addition to the uh, river yeah. front down there. Looks good. A quick Thanks. Quick follow-up follow sure. on Mr. Higgins' question. How many spots it's will there be of uh, the on-street parking? 19 proposed on-street. 19, okay. Diagonal? Diagonal, correct. Okay. Thank you. Good point. Uh, Mr. Simmons. I, yeah, I have one question, and I, I was, I wrote it down a few days ago. The question, I think, was how, how does this relate to number three, page 10, and that has to do with the reduction of spaces for saving the eight specimen trees. 
I, I was just getting a little confused on swapping trees for parking and deleting trees for some other reason, right. how they relate to each other. So reasonably, uh, the way it works is because of the great lengths that went into uh, the preservation of significant specimen trees in the west parcel. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of a city precedence on certain capacities in the riverfront overlay, and Dory can probably speak on this better than anybody. But realistically, uh, an evaluation was determined, and we've worked with city planning staff to come up with that. So in essence, we're swapping specimen trees for parking spaces. And in essence, we're giving credit by, for preservation. And getting nothing for wavering tin and other trees. Well, ultimately, the wavering is above and beyond only from the riverfront overlay, not from the city's code as well. Okay. So, yeah. That's but you're it. correct. There's, you're correct in that effect, yes. Thank you. And, and uh, we can, it, is, it is in the um, Article 14, our tree and landscaping article, uh, about being able to give credit, parking credits for specimen trees. We have done that for um, the Tiki Bar. They're parking on the west side. Uh, I think everybody's okay parking over there under the, that shade. Um, and then we also did it for the train station because they had saved some really nice, uh, uh, very 40 to 50 year old uh, oak trees too. So those were some other sites and the precedent from those sites had been about two and a half to three parking spaces per tree. Uh, these weren't just um, you know, 18 inch trees, these were the trees that were 24 and 26 inches in diameter. Uh, so we were consistent with what we had done with other, uh, other sites. So they're really huge trees. Yes. This site features a, a, a very large species in the center. Yeah. Yes, I, I know, and that's, that's the whole point, to save a tree that's grown for 70, 80, maybe 100 years, and that's spread out. It's, in Florida, we look for parking places with shade, and if that can be retained on, on an edge of a property or an edge of a parking lot, that's great. So, so I can see where and I remember the conversations we had when it came up before when we were negotiating a couple of other restaurants that were in a tight area to get parking in lieu. Um, it, it makes sense. We did have, um, and Ryan added to a couple of sheets, I don't know which one's offhand, but um, to be able to accommodate and preserve those trees, uh, it's either in our code or it's a, it's a landscaping standard of the distance from those trees to be able to put uh, concrete around them. So he, he has drawn the diameter around them, I think it's either 15 or it was based on the size, so that you're not bringing another parking space right up to those trees, which ultimately uh, could demise those trees. But So he's, he's added the required uh, um, buffer around those trees to, to keep the concrete out of that when they were placing those, those parking spaces. Okay, thank you, Mr. Simmons. Uh, Mr. Alvarez. Yes, I haven't been there lately, but I've been, I've been there before, and when I found out about that, you're going to build on top of those pilings, and I know I saw here, I read that it was approved back in 1991. That's almost 30 years ago. Yeah. Have you guys done any kind of like a reset, something to impact to see if that, I mean, would that hold on? Because without that 30 years deterioration. And yeah, no, that's a great question. I'm sure you have, but. So we just know. recently, a um, uh, temporary construction permit was pulled and they, and they brought a full piece of equipment and did pile testing with the crane. And they tested the piles uh, to verify they're structurally compliant to move forward with this project. Because at that point, it basically everything just kind of falls apart, of course. Okay, yeah. Realistically, this system, you would not, there are certain components of this that would be a struggle to permit, something like the overwater, to permit today. So holding on to that asset and make sure it's viable is a key part of it. Yeah, because what just happened in Surfside, you know what I mean? And now everybody's yep. with up in arms and everybody's kind of afraid and with the exposure with the salt and Rightfully all so. the elements. No, and the structural engineer, yeah, there's no, um, there's no corners getting cut when it comes to the evaluation or something is, like that. They can hold on. They're going to hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And there's and they are there's reinforcement with the with the slab itself as a whole, but the piles themselves went through a testing process. Okay, that's it. I'm good. Thank that you. was also and just to, uh, to expound on that. That was also connected to the variance for the building height. It was right. one I of remember the conditions four inches that something. It, yes, but that if it wasn't a sound concrete uh, and they had to start over or rebuild that pad then they weren't going to be able to get the variance because then they could build it according to the finished floor elevation Got that was it. needed. Um, so that's why another reason why it was tested to, <clears throat> to verify that that variance was um, for the building height was still mm -hmm. sound. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Adler. Mr. Mrs. Uh, uh, Tongue-tied. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, again, a very thorough plan, very easy to follow and understand, and I, I appreciate the questions that the other commissioners have brought. I personally have lived in Sebastian about 25 years, and it's like, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's just an abysmal, it has always been an abysmal mess down there, and we look forward to having it cleaned up. And I like the idea of some additional public parking to increase places for the walkers to park on the far end of the street as well as on the other end of the street. Um, it's, yeah. um, I think it's all a good thing. Um, and I know you'll do a good job with it and it'll be another star in the crown here. Thank Looking you. forward to it, thank you. Yes. All the questions have been answered. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kautenberg. Um, I just have a couple of kind of general ones. Um, and looking at parking on the, would be the west parcel in front of the, the new restaurant there, uh, there's plenty of parking, but I was concerned with, you know, it, it doesn't specify, it doesn't look like seating area or anything like that. Is it going to be mostly pickup, drive in, pickup, drive out? Or? Yeah, it's uh, the the concept is um, uh, ownership team is a big has a big roots in barbecue, so it's a it's a large scale. It, the intent is to be more of a you know kind of a smokehouse with more of a takeout barbecue style. Uh, there is a small seating area. If you look at the architectural, you can see a small oh, yeah. outdoor seating area. I mean, I'm sorry, screen seating area, but no exterior seating. No, it's a takeout or small and in, you know intimate seating internal. Okay, with that in mind, I, th I think the parking is fine. I was just concerned if it had gone the other way. Um, I, I just want to make sure we've got three drawings here with elevations, and I, I love the elevations. I, the, the design of the buildings, and it fits well with the trend that we're going to. I'm referring to these, the, the small drawings that uh, we have here. Yes, sir. Uh, the only question I had was they're, they're not really well identified. It's a proposed building at Squidlips Sebastian. So I can walk you through it real fast. What? The um, ones with the, the, the linear building with the, this item here, this is the overwater restaurant. Okay, yes, that I, that I saw. You got that I got one? That, and I saw the nice design on the front side this, of the front. This structure here is the, is the marina support building. That's the small building in the in the middle on the east parcel. Okay, here. so that's the one that's there. It's what kind of a yellowish color now? Uh, yes, correct. It looks like basically where they have an ice house that feeds as, as you head out to the marina. Yes, yeah, that right building next to the... that building goes away. This is a replacement of that building. Okay. So the only building you would see is if you're driving down this course, you would see the new marina support building, which act as for the the slips that uh, and the in the individuals who utilize the marina, Squidlips itself as it currently exists, the new overwater restaurant, and then ultimately the smokehouse and storage. On building. the other side of the street. On the west parcel. Yeah. The west, two buildings on the west, three buildings on the east. Well, let me tell you, this is going to dress that location up yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. Yes, it, it's really nice. And I, I can't say it enough, the design that you've incorporated, and you paid attention to what's going on around here, and that's good as far as uh, design and architecture and uh, a couple of places that were still serviceable but questionable as far as appearance. Um, uh, okay, parking we're taking care of. I'm paying attention to other things, now I have to look at my own questions, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, Mr. Oh, Chair? Um, oh, the, the plan, on, we're on the, um, on the east parcel, and I guess it would be kind of near where the building we we're just talking about, the marina supply. Uh, there's a walkway kind of that goes all the way around on three sides of the building. Correct. Is that part of the construction? In other words, it's going to be done when the building is completed? Yeah, they'll pull the building permit. So they'll pull a building permit for the, uh, it's permitted under this site plan that you're approving today, or prospectively approving. Um, <laughs> But ultimately, it's an elevated structure. The existing grades around five, four and a half to five. The structure will rest around just above nine. Um, so it'll be an elevated walkway, much the way you'd imagine something that kind of fits the, the criteria for a riverfront overlay. 
and then that feeds with over, uh, elevated walkways that, that traverse up to the overwater restaurant. So it's kind of a continuous unit, you'd basically see mm -hmm. it. And that's where we've used to screen some of the mechanical equipment as well. And that's how it's kind of works. But yeah, those, those individual building permits will be pulled for those, um, those wooden walkways. Yeah. Okay, and I noticed the walkway up to the new uh, restaurant, the overwater, uh, you got a real wide one, 12. 12 feet and then the other one which is probably the service one that's that's wide as well seven so it's really nice and it's adequate and I and the design is nice um, let's see oh a uh, question on it would be the looking at the lagoon the right hand far back corner there's a concrete square that's missing. What's the plan for that area? Is it just going to be cordoned off or part of the fencing? So if that I'm no looking one can get there? Oh, to the south, the south, the east parcel, but the south side yes, of the east parcel? Southeast corner of that <clears throat> over the water pad. Oh, that was a. So at the way when, it was, when the document was surveyed, there's actually one parcel. Um, because of the nature of when they had they set the piles, which obviously were structure compliant, but the hollow core, because when they originally done the hollow core planks, for whatever reason that was damaged through some event, be it some sort of storm event or some, some marine vehicle, that slab was actually missing. So when they had prepared this right, so originally from the civil document, that square represents just the definition of that. But, but beyond that, ours isn't the comprehensive structural design, ours is just delineating that location. The entirety of the slab, you know, gets beefed up as necessary with its hollow core and reinforced concrete design. I wasn't questioning integrity, just what's going to happen with that open area? That oh, that area gets filled in. It squares off the overwater. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's 8,400 square feet for the restaurant as a rectangle, as a complete rectangle. Perfect. You'll eliminate a lot of questions filling that in. And I got questions one more. about stability too. If right? you don't mind, the sign you're putting a new sign together, right? Yeah, also. they're putting a new sign. Correct. Okay, yeah, yeah. Later on, all right. Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes. May I? May I? Yes. Make a statement, <laughs> or, or at least clarify something. Um, I want to get back to Mr. Kizabash's question. Questions. Is pointing out. Um, Dory and I are going to go back and look at that um, because you are correct for section BB that we shouldn't have the site ro rolling off into the right of way. <clears throat> so we're going to relook at that and readdress that. Okay. Um, that section CC where you have the landscape area, that's what you were talking about mm -hmm. going right into and I think, I think Mr. Cristino also mentioned that. Yeah. So thank you. This is why we appreciate our astute and, you know, so intelligent commission taking the second look at this. Um, so we'll look at that. Um, as far as the um, parking and loo program, we understand your concerns, but that has been in place for a long time, and the city does then maintain the parking. And, and all the parcel right will be developed in that area. Mm -hmm. The whole Indian River Drive will become a parking lot, you know. It's good to have it for public parking. It really is. Yeah, but the main thing is the, how you handle the drainage, how you handle the maintenance, all those things, you know. You're, you're absolutely correct, yeah. sir. And yeah. I know that yeah. that one ditch in front of squid lips yeah. that our stormwater and public works have wanted that filled and piped for a very long time because I believe it didn't it yeah. didn't function correctly mm -hmm. and so this we thank this project for doing that for us and and then making it, it a compatible um, use what, by putting the parking right on top of it. So yeah, it's I, something I know that the city has been talking about. I like, I like the time. development. I like that property should be developed. I, I like yes. that thing. I mean, so. Yes. I'll put that other, one. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. The other, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. How yeah. much more commercial we yeah. would expect in that area? That looks like most of residential. Yeah. Uh, possibly in that stretch of. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. Residential. I'm, once you go past that, I guess we're in the county, correct? Past butchers? Past butchers, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a bunch of development going on yeah. there, but in our stretch. So I wanted to also point out, if you look at Section AA, mm -hmm. you had you'd rightfully qu questioned 
landscaping within our stormwater ponds. Yeah. Those are not typically allowed. However, in this instance, we looked at this, we talked about it ad infinitum, I think, <laughs> Tori and I. Um, if you look at section AA, it shows that because of the topo with the, the adjacent property to the west, mm -hmm. um, they had to put in a retaining wall in the landscape buffer. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that in that the, the one five feet between the property line and the retaining wall, there really wasn't enough adequate room to put in some of the large canopy trees that are required in the riverfront overlay. And so we allowed them to, to put them adjacent to the, to the retaining wall, but also on the stormwater banks, therefore not taking up some of the treatment volume, which you rightfully would say St. John's wouldn't allow. But in addition to that, we did have MBV provide us with calculations, taking up some of that. You will see in the middle of the retention pond, there are also bushes and trees there. It's very, it it looks middle, like yeah. it's in the middle, but yeah. it's, it should really be, it, it's a little misleading. Okay. They really should be showing I, I see the one you're see, looking at. Yeah. They, Ryan, as you yeah. know, they should be more on the side and on the on the banks. Okay. But but Ryan did. Pro I keep saying Ryan. I'm sorry. The engineer <laughs> did the, provide us with calculations for any ex um, additional volume that the trees might. Um, There's a space between retaining wall and the property lines, five feet. If they could increase seven or eight feet, that space, they could put all the landscaping there. True, like sir. Yeah. Really are tight on this property as far as for, okay. for drainage. So okay. we, right. we felt that it was a, a, an okay thing. But that should be included in the, in the uh, exemption of waiver section. So they should get, yeah, all those. To things. have the... the yeah. The um, I'm sorry, landscaping yeah. within the yeah. stormwater pond. Yeah. I agree. We can yeah. add that in yeah. as a as a identifying that we've done that. I think yeah. that's that's probably okay. Any problem with that? And I, you know, and then finally, I just really want to thank Ryan with MBV, Mr. Underhill, and Dory. They have been working on this plan for an awfully long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And really have worked well together on bringing this together and, and I think it's just gonna be such a wonderful asset to this community. So I, I just wanted yeah. to throw my three cents in since I was here tonight. <laughs> but thank you all very much. Again, we thank everyone for looking at these plans as closely as you do. Comments appreciated. Before we move to the next thing, I just wanted to remind um, Mr. McLean that you'll have an opportunity to respond. We're going to open it to the floor now. Mm -hmm. To you'll have an opportunity to respond to any of the questions that come up on that. So we'll proceed with that. And um, so at this point, we'll open the meeting to anyone who is attending the meeting that wishes to speak um, in favor of the request in the proposed plan. Or anyone on Zoom, does anyone on Zoom uh, in queue? Nobody has their hand raised. Okay, then we'll move right away to any of those who wish to speak in opposition. I see none. I'll ask again. Anyone on Zoom in a queue? And uh, nobody has their hand raised. Okay. So we're clearing that. Um, Mr. McLean, do you want to add anything further at this point? I know you've covered a lot of details for us, and we respect that. Um, I do not. Um, I appreciate Lisa's comments at the end, and she very much summed it up. Uh, Dory's been hands-on with this the entirety of the time, so all the staff report is just the, kind of the tip of the iceberg of the work that's been put into this project, and uh, I greatly thank all the work that her team, her and her staff has put together this, and uh, um, thank you and appreciate uh, your time. Okay, thank and thanks for your effort. Look forward to seeing this go up. Um, be before we uh, open it to um, this, the, the commissioners, uh, and have the staff summarize. Um, 
as I understand it right now, we may have two possible um, additions to the points for a uh, motion. Okay. I was, I, yes, I, I, I was going to kind of summarize that from the discussion. Um, okay, One please. thing I wanted to add and clarify for some of the questions. So uh, Ryan was right, though, that there will be three separate building permits for, the, for each one of the building. The first one that's going to be ready to get their CO, that is where the requirement of the parking, the landscaping, that final P&Z inspection, that's where all of that will have to be put in, the stormwater. Um, so they have, they're, they're working on getting their permits in. We've, we've kind of done a cursory review on, on some of those buildings, um, but that's when everything will tie together. So not all three buildings have to be done at the same time, but the first building will be the one that triggers the parking, stormwater, landscaping will have to be completed. Um, I wanted to interject that in, into the record. Um, but it does, um, we are, we're going to summarize in that uh, keeping our recommendations um, as, as shown on, on page 9 and 10 with the addition of a, a two more, um, uh, one condition and another waiver. The added condition will be to re-examine staff, to re-examine the 10-foot buffer east of the motorcycle parking adjacent to the parking and loose spaces regarding watershed into the street. Uh, so we'll, re we'll examine that 10-foot buffer area, uh, see if that can be modified so that it isn't a, a total watershed into our street uh, area. And then also an additional waiver to uh, grant a waiver allowing stormwater and retaining wall within the perimeter landscape buffer area. Okay, do you have any other comments on that um, summary before the commissioners begin deliberating? Uh, no, thank you, Chairman. Okay. Not that you needed to, but. Okay. Uh, at this time, the commissioners will deliberate amongst themselves as regards uh, the plan questions and, or any items you want to get cleared out. Uh, before we move forward, uh, let's start with Mr. Anyone, C anyone in public is against with the project? Those three gentlemen sitting there. Yeah, we haven't asked that thing. We ask only fa in a favor of the project. Anyone in from the public? No, so we haven't. Asked. The question was asked for both. Okay. Yeah. First, in favor, and then he asked okay. those against the project. Yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe I need to turn the volume up here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, they took that control away from me. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Simmons. I have no further questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Alvarez? No, I am good. No further questions. Mrs. Kautenberg? No further questions. Okay, Mr. No. Quizzlebach? No. Mr. Casino? No questions. Mr. Hinkin? No questions. And leave it to me, I have one. Lighting, parking lot lighting. Um, I wasn't able to adequately review that. I didn't see a drawing dedicated to that. Uh, is that something that's going to be handled separately? Uh, no, the, the uh, site plan does show the location, both on the east and west side. There's a, a little legend um, uh, that indicates lighting. Uh, so there will be some, some light poles on the east and west side, and then the photometric plan, um, I don't know if that was separate or at the end of this plan, that showed a couple of different things. The lumens that would be generated from that light to verify that it wasn't going to be going off-site into the uh, bed and breakfast or the, the off-site residential areas. Um, and then it also had the cut sheets that showed you what kind of uh, lamp uh, poles and lighting that that would be. So you're comfortable with it. I saw a, dr uh, a timer. Uh, detail on a timer, but I didn't see anything else. So I think my, my um, there's going to be on the posts for the ramps, I believe there's lighting on top of each of those posts. Those may be the ones that are on timers, so that uh, at nighttime it's, it's lighted. Uh, and then there was lighting on the buildings. There may be some entrance, maybe there was a, a, another lighting that had timer for the rear of the building. Um, but the, the, most of the sides had the gooseneck lighting. And then also there was going to be, they were 20 foot poles in the parking area, again with gooseneck lighting type of fixtures. Uh, off of those, off of those yeah, poles. I, I saw that, but I didn't see the drawing. And I saw the reference to 20 feet instead of 30 feet. Uh, but I, well, move on. You're comfortable. So I have no further questions. Um, 
So uh, we're prepared for a motion. I'll give it a shot, but bear with me, okay? Sure. Okay. I move that we recommend approval of this project subject to the five bullet points listed under on page beginning on page nine ten. and on to ten in item number three adding the word per tree after the word provided in the last sentence and also to include item number two regarding um, Riverfront Overlay District design criteria waiver allowing for a 412 roof pitch and item number three granting Riverfront Overlay District landscape waiver for five foundation canopy trees required around the west side smokehouse restaurant and up to five canopy trees within the shoreline buffer area on the front of the new overwater restaurant and to include item number four staff to re-examine the drainage on the west side of the street and uh, make any necessary improvements to make it correct if necessary and item number five to grant a waiver to allow stormwater in the buffer area. Is that correct? Yes. <sighs> I'll second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, uh, Mr. Please. Simmons. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a motion that was made heroically by Louise Kautenberg and, and I think correctly, uh, second by Mr. Simmons. Correct. We'll have a roll call vote on that, please, Madam Secretary. Hello. <laughs> Are you ready for a roll call vote? Doesn't look like we lost our connection. Uh, Ms. Graham, are you there? Now it's okay. Yes, yes. Sorry, it wasn't working. All right. And you got the motion and the second names? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cottenberg and Mr. Simmons. Correct. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Ross. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Mr. Cristino. Yes. Mr. Kizilbosch. Yes. Mr. Simmons. Yes. Mr. Hugen. Yes. And Ms. Cottenberg. Yes. That is seven, four, none against the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. This will mark the beginning of something really incredible in Sebastian with, I can't say it enough, the nice designs that you've come up with and the patience, perseverance, and dedication to get the job done. That, that's really impressive. We thank you very much. Yep. Okay, now at this point, we will close the quasi-judicial hearing of the plan commission and reopen the Plan Commission, City of Sebastian Plan Commission meeting and uh, discuss another item on the agenda, and that is the um, accessory structure for Blue Island Street. Uh, Attorney Anand, could you read that in for us, please? Just point of clarity. Uh, you want to do public input first? That's on your agenda? Or you just want to do that last? 
that item eight, unless I'm missing. Oh, I see. It's on the back. Uh, we, we probably should follow the agenda. Thank you. It's on the back side, and I didn't turn it over. Sorry about that. And we have some folks here. So we'll now open it for anyone that has uh, public input on items other than those on the printed agenda uh, up to five minutes on a subject affecting the city of Sebastian. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to the commission? You have free air time. Seeing none. We appreciate your coming. On Zoom, is there anyone on Zoom in queue? Nobody has their hand raised. Okay. And that will conclude the um, uh, the public input portion of the meeting. Now we'll go to new business, which is the accessory structure on uh, 65 Blue Island Street. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, so we're in 9A, new business, accessory structure review, la uh, mm -hmm. land development code section 54-2-7.5, 1,000 square foot detached garage, 65 Blue Island Street, San, Sebast San Sebastian Springs. Thank you. Is there a representative here of the project, either the owner or the contract manager the commission um, I don't see the contractor here uh, usually we do require a representative here but this is a really straightforward application and so if you're okay that we do proceed reviewing this I can certainly present it uh, the contractor the homeowner is not here that would be your decision if you would rather table this until they can be here but I, I feel this is a straightforward and I can answer uh, questions that you may have on this um, if we if we proceed okay I think we could. Do any of the commissioners have any objections to proceeding without uh, the owner or the contractor here? No. Since we've all reviewed it. And, okay. Then uh, let's go ahead, Ms. Spasworth, with the, um, the presentation. So uh, this is actually was an application for a new home in uh, San Sebastian Springs on a larger lot. Uh, the new home itself has its two or three car garage. This is a detached uh, garage for for an RV and um, it, it's being it's a custom garage it's being c constructed cement poured walls block going up at the same time that the house does um, and they have added a cupola onto it so it's a pretty straightforward um, request it, it meets all the requirements it's going to meet the setbacks that it needs to based on that size and it's not higher than the uh, house um, the only thing that it did miss is when it came in with the, with the house permit, because it was all one permit, uh, there wasn't a specific uh, landscaping plan for the required shrubs that goes around that. I have already spoken to the, um, to the contractor. He has already driven one up, drawn one up that will show those 36 bushes around the building, and he's aware that it would need to be, that would need to be if approved or uh, planted before that he gets a CO uh, for, that, for that building, for the house. Um, we also included in your packet the land clearing sheet that shows how many tree credits that they're going to get. So for the oversized lots, uh, they are going to meet their tree requirement. Um, staff, if they're adding a cupola onto this. It's going to match the house. It totally meets the intent of the code. Staff recommends approval with the condition that the um, landscaping uh, shrubs around the foundation of the accessory structure is planted before a certificate of completion can occur for the accessory structure. Okay, thank you, Dory, for your reading of the, the project. Um, do any of the commissioners, we'll start with Mr. Quizzlebosch, have any questions or comments you'd like to make about it to, on the project? Pardon? No questions. Thank you. Mr. Cristino? I just a quick question. On the permit application, I'm assuming that the, uh, the accessory building is included with the initial permit application? Yes. Okay. That's all.
Thank you, Mr. Hugan. I think, I think the house is under construction. Yes, it, it is. The lot's been cleared and they've got some fill dirt in. And no. I didn't check today before to see exactly where they were on the inspections. I thought the slab had been poured already, but it's going to be constructed at the same time as the house. Okay. There is one of the slabs has been. No, yeah. not yet. No slab. Um, three rows of block are up. I don't think it's filled on the inside. It maybe hadn't cured yeah, enough to fill it. And Mr. Hugan, you, you're okay. Mr. Simmons, I'm okay. questions? <clears throat> Mr. Alvarez? I'm okay. Ms. Conberg? I do have a question. Um, this neighborhood has a homeowners association, and I know that they have a lot of restrictions there. Has this structure been um, approved by their architectural review committee? Yes, I was going to add that in after Thank your question. You. That was. Uh, bit of information that yes it has gone through their architectural review committee thank you is that anything we should add in on the on the approval no it's it's um, I know that the the when the permit comes in the homeowner has to sign that that they're aware that they're a part of an HOA uh, but usually this they come in with a, a form that shows that it had been approved it's more of uh, uh, the HOA having to enforce their regulations but I was aware that it had gone through their review already yeah, I, sometimes people build things and ask permission later and that's why I ask because I we don't want to have people get into a needless snit especially because it came in with the new house so the new house is this was all at what this was one package that went before mm -hmm. the review board instead of the house being built and then down the road coming in with the accessory structure it's already been reviewed at one package with both structures I have no questions, just a comment. There's a really nice gopher tortoise there. It's about six foot in diameter. I saw it both Monday and today, and it wanted to come home with me, I swear. It was underneath the car when I went to back up. I looked around, there it was. I backed straight up and missed it. But thank goodness, anyway. Uh, weak attempt at humor, sorry. Uh, any further questions? If not, uh, we're prepared for motion. I move that we approve the uh, uh, requested action on the detached garage for 65 Blue Allen Street, including the additional considerations on page three. I second that motion. Uh, Point before we go any further, Dory, you mentioned um, 36 bushes. Would that be appropriate to add into the first point? That was a recommended condition of approval, yes. That okay. the, the shrub, the 36 shrubs be planted before the certificate of completion for the accessory structure. So Mr. Simmons, would you accept the addition as a last sentence in the first item? Uh, the addition of 36 bushes around the accessory building. Would you accept that in your motion? Yes. And Mr. Alvarez in the Yes, second? I'll second that as well. Okay, so we have a, an amended motion, if you will. Everyone clear on the, the amendment? Yes. Okay, uh, call a question and we're ready for a vote call, Madam Secretary. Thank you. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Kizzelbosch? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Hugan? Yes. Mr. Cristino? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. And Ms. Cottenberg? Yes. So it is 7 0 in favor. The motion passes unanimously. Great. Did you get the, the motion and the second names? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Then that concludes the new business section of the plan commission meeting. Uh, next point would be uh, commissioners matters and with the 
Well, it's not really a resignation, but um, uh, Mr. I don't know how to call it. Would you? Uh, it's not a not a resignation, but Mr. Reyes is no longer on the commission. Let's put it that way. So, and he was uh, vice, or no, he was chairman, and I am vice chairman at this point. So we need to move forward and have an election of officers. And I would, at this point, open it up for uh, nominations for. Uh, chairperson. I nominate Mr. Roth for chairperson. Is there a second? I second. Is there another candidate? Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Um, Do you accept? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I accept. Uh, okay. Uh, I would just make it official, uh, Mr. Chair. And just I'll, take, I'll take, accept. A, take a vote. We need, we need a nomination. I'll just, I'll just make it official. Just take a vote. To, to nominate, to appoint you. I'll oh, just make it official. That's right. We need to do them separately. Okay. Um, a vote. Uh, I'll, uh, roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Okay, uh, Ms. Cottenberg. Yes. Mr. Cristino. Yes. Mr. Eugen. Yes. Mr. Roth. Reluctant. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Simmons. Yes. Mr. Kigabosch. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Okay, I no. guess you're elected. Now for vice chair. Thank you. Now we need a nomination for vice chair and a second. Well, nomination and a second for vice chairperson. Oh boy. <laughs> Somebody needs to step up here. It does need to be a regular member. Unfortunately, it can't be a alternate. Show shows up a lot, if that helps. Pardon? So you do show up a lot, if that helps anyone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say, I nominate Mr. Kusselba for vice chair. No. I'll, I'll, I'd second no. that. <laughs> he's he's within that. striking distance, no. and he said no. Okay. I'd volunteer if anybody. Yeah. Well, Mr. Yeah. Alvarez. Yeah. Oh, God. Come on, you can handle it. So, I don't care, whatever. Uh, I, it's fine with me. I'd rather have Ms. I'll make it official. I nominate Al Alvarez. So, yeah, I know, right? I'm sorry. I kind of, in the levity here, I lost who the nomination was for and if there was a second <laughs> nomination. People open the thing. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Christina nominated Al. Okay. Oh, God. Well, was there another one? Did I miss one? Or? No. no I'm, we're fine. Okay. Go. You got it coming. So, yeah. I'll take this boss. Very, I know you would. Okay, is there a second to that then? For which one? Mr. Alvarez for vice chair. I'll second that. Are there any other candidates? Is there another candidate for vice chairperson? The competition is fierce. <laughs> <laughs> um, hearing none. I need a challenger. Uh, is it necessary to take a vote? Yeah, I would just make it official. Just make a vote. Okay. Um, would you uh, do another roll call, Madam Secretary? Yes, sir. Ms. Cottenberg. Yes. Mr. Cristino. Yes. Mr. Hugan. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yes. Mr. Simmons. Yes. Mr. Kizzlebosch. Yes. And Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Seven Congratulations. to zero. He is the vice chairman. Lucky seven. Thank you. I'm sure I have my staff here that can help me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Vice chair. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, Thank you, guys. Next item on the agenda is city attorney's matters. I have nothing for the board other than I'll forward that uh, case law to you, to you and to your members. Yes. It's not just a statute. Yes, that would be great. Um, you know, I also, I've been thinking about this. We need to make sure that we all work under the, the proper guidelines as far as following a procedure on, on the minutes. And uh, it, it might, or on the minutes, on the agenda, it might be good if we had an agenda that might be uh, set up in such a way that, you know, it would be something that we could follow, uh, you know, in, in what action has taken place at that point. I don't know if it's something that's worthy of doing. Um, and I apologize, I'm not understanding um, what you're looking to revise this agenda? It, just to take an agenda and, you know, like uh, under new business, review of and what it's for uh, and how action is taken in, under that heading. If I can, well, let's this is the uh, format that's been approved by the uh, uh, council members. Uh, this is the format. The only difference is for some reason uh, the public input here is at the end. The council flipped it and put the public input at the beginning. That's the only change that they made by resolution. So I would suggest just keep the same format uh, that oh, we have. Without a doubt. This was only what I would call a cheat sheet that whoever is running the meeting would have to kind of be a guide. Like right now we have the, the one that have lost it. No, this one on the quasi, uh, and that's good. Uh, without that, um, I looked at my agenda and I blew this one up to tonight and already before I came to the meeting so I could see it. But that, that's a help and so, something like that. But anyway, let's not no, belabor it at this point. No, we'll no, discuss I, it if and I see can, where it goes. just reach out to uh, um, Jeanette and I'm sure she can work out to help assist you in running the, the meetings because she does have I thought uh, formats for uh, running the uh, our council meetings as well as to assist you so I would just reach out to Jeanette William our city clerk maybe she can help you out what you're looking for I yeah. think I think like you have with the quasi judicial you have that cheat sheet you're just maybe looking for some sort of checklist for each one of the items of yes, what kind of questions you should be asking or what would be discussed at that that's so I, I could certainly work with Jeanette too and we can put something together yeah, it's just, I, I know, but on the other hand, I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> I hate that. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is um, city attorney's matters. I, I, I okay. just, you did, Covered you're it. good. Okay, <laughs> uh, staff matters. Good Everybody evening. Matters. <laughs> <laughs> to your, your uh, chairs there, you do have a brand yes. new autographed well not really <laughs> copy of our our approved awesome. uh, comprehensive plan your names are in it yeah. i thank you all from the bottom and top of thank my you. toes for all of your work truly we couldn't have done it without you truly now having said that <laughs> legislation just passed a new law um that I thought would be future Lisa's problem, but apparently it's landed back on, on this Lisa's desk. Um, we have to add another element. It's the private property rights element. And we'll have to add it sooner than later because any amendment to the comprehensive plan is going to require this. And thus far, the DEO has told us that um, amendments to the future land use map would, um, would suffice as an amendment to our comprehensive plan. So we do have some future land use map changes coming up and so therefore we'll have to write this element so this will get a little bigger. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. So you will be very busy in the next year and we thank you all again for your dedication. Lisa, I have one question. Yes, sir. There was something that was passed out 
for the uh, it was a packet was passed that, up. That's an update to learning development code, correct? I'm, I'm sorry, say oh. that again. I thought it was to the. You said yeah, mini code. Never mind. I got. I never mind. Thank yeah, you. He's talking about this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. those are yeah, those are changes. Got to update yeah. your book. Yes. Yeah, yes, just sir. update your book, right? Yes. Sir. That was yes. codification of the mobile food truck ordinance. Okay, so that goes here. Yes. No. Take that front sheet. No, no. Take no. Up no. And then, yeah. no. Not in the here. comp plan. Oh, the other book. That's okay. for the land development code. Yes. Got it. Got it. Yeah. The green book. Got it. And if you have an issue with actually. Uh, putting it into your, your plan, bring your entire book and that packet to the city clerk and show system. Yes. Okay. And that concludes business. Uh, motion? I make a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second that motion. We are adjourned. Good night, Janet. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. Good night. Long meeting, but thank you, Joel.